that's going on is fitting together. It's as if we pre-planned anything. Isn't that cool? Today we're uh, starting in April. It's April. It's not April Fool's Day, but it's close to it. And uh, we are blessed to be here in this atmosphere of love and empowering. What we're doing this morning is we're empowering our lives uh, by by allowing our minds to be open for an expanding an expanding awareness that we are an eternal presence. That's what this month's going to be all about. That we are, in fact, a mysterious, unseen, unformed, unchanging, dynamic, creative presence with tremendous powers of creativity. Would you all agree with that? Mm -hmm. We need to embody that in our thinking. One thing as I started thinking about this talk uh, this morning and last week is the fact that one thing we'll get out of all this this month is that each one of us are going to come to a decision that the greatest difficulty we have, could you imagine what that might be? Anybody want to shout out our greatest difficulty? Change. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> our greatest difficulty is realizing that we are a soul, okay, number one, learning to live in a human body. Isn't that incredible? When we start looking at this month, we need to keep that focus, that we are actually a soul, and we are a soul that's learning to live in a human body. What's kind of awesome on that, during this month, uh, we, are, we, we realize that we reaffirm the fact that we're so much more than the content of our life. We are not our bodies. We are not the accomplishments that we have made. We are not our titles, our, our, our degrees. That's not who we really are. Uh, so this idea of, of renewal and transformation is about restoring and reinviting re the idea in our consciousness to restore in our consciousness that which we truly are, that we are a life form of the divine, untouched by the human experience, but experiencing what's going on in the human experience. And by so doing this, we need to create a way for this dramatic idea of the soul to manifest its creative ideas in our lives itself. It's up to us to create that atmosphere where the soul can th uh, thrive, uh, where we get out of its way uh, through our thought processes, our limited thinking, all the stuff that we go through. I'll tell you, we're bombarded every moment of the day with all this stuff of the universe. And the bottom line is, when you look back on it, some of you were without electricity for almost a full week. You know, We have some friends up in Norfolk that still don't have electricity. What does that do for us? We can look at that as a very negative idea. What it does for Angelo, it gives me an extreme, a tremendous appreciation for what we have. We breathe and we're living every day, but when we see people like our dear friend Bob Verstraten, who had to struggle for our, just a breath, who treasured that breath every moment. How many of us ever wake up in the morning and say, I'm so grateful to have this breath, this breath of God itself, expressing itself in my life. So the, 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 the storms that we go through uh, are all beneficial. But what we need to do is create the mental atmosphere to where we accept what's going on from that, that standpoint that it's a greater gift, it's a gift for us. And then it's our opportunity to appreciate all that we have. Uh, today I'm going to give uh, credit to uh, a book that my daughter sent me, this book, which is pretty awesome uh, for Christmas. And I finally got around to reading it, and I thought, hey, this is awesome, I'm going to use this. And uh, she'll be listening to this on YouTube, so, so uh, this is uh, from you, Anna. <laughs> but the, the name of the author was Robert o o Hoto. How many of you have read or heard of uh, Robert Hohoto? I never have, and I've been around for a few years. And, uh, and so I give credit to Robert, but I also give credit to his book. It's called Transforming Fate into Destiny. Isn't that cool? It's a good thing. Robert tells us that we start off with what we call self-esteem. Uh, where that we, we establish a value of who we think we are based on outer comments. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the, when we're in school or uh, our parents, uh, the comments and opinions of others. And then we get a little bit older and then all of a sudden we, we, we establish this self-esteem as our value of all the stuff that I've created. All my accomplishments, my degrees, and all, all this stuff of the outside world. That's called self-esteem. And uh, 
And Robert said that's all well and good, but self-esteem is, um, is um, really very fickle. It never stays the same. The opinions of others are always changing. Uh, we get older, and then we slow down a bit. And, uh, and then, you know, if, if that's my value, then as I get older, my gosh, what's happened to me? I'm not as useful or as good as I am. I decided to, uh, this identification with stuff is, really intrigues me, and I talk about it a lot, as you know. But yeah, uh, one, one day, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was invited to go to, uh, uh, it was not a seminar, it was kind of a workshop. They invited the um, local business leaders and county officials and state representatives to be at this meeting to look at and discuss all the issues that are affecting the state. As you know, the state's near bankruptcy, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, there's about 20 of us sitting around this large table, and the facilitator said, let's identify ourselves first. Let's go around the table and, and define who we are and what we do, et cetera. And again, we started doing that. And you sit there and say, I'm the CEO of such and such. I'm the representative of the senator. I'm this and I'm that. And all this stuff out there, it finally came to Angelo. And I thought, you know, this is my opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I check him out. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what I wanted to do, but you know. And so I said, I am. And I wanted to say, I am what I am, and then shut up. <laughs> so I said, I am. No, I can't do that. I'm Angelo Pizzell from the Positive Living Center of Oakers, California. <laughs> And people waited for the next thing. <laughs> Finally, a, a friend of mine in the audience from Oakhurst said, Angela is always so humble. He's, he's the president. He gives a speech about Angela. He's the president of our Chamber of Commerce. He's the former superintendent. I mean, he went on and on with all this dialogue of who I am. And I wanted to say, that's not who I am. You know? I'm a life form of the divine. I'm the eyes in which the universe sees itself and the, and the mind in which it knows itself. I'm a divine presence. And all this stuff that you mentioned is just my creations. It's not who I really am. It's not the core of my being. But I didn't do that. Because I didn't want them to respond and say, oh, yeah, he's that nutcase from... <laughs> 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 That's not for that. 